we have a caregiver who wrote in and she's wondering if, if she can be around her husband when he's having radiation. So is there any type of radiation that a man would receive for treatment of prostate cancer where somebody couldn't be around them? So when you go for proton therapy, external beam radiation with SBRT or IMRT, there's no radiation after you leave the facility. Uh, the, the radiation is administered and it dissipates 100%. So no concern whatsoever in that regard. The, there are two types of brachytherapy. One, temporary high-dose rate seeds. Again, no radiation is left in the body after you leave the facility. When you're done with your treatment, there's no radiation left. Permanent seeds uh, do emit radiation for anywhere from two to six weeks after the implanted seeds are put in the prostate. And patients are all carefully advised to you know, not have babies sit on their lap and this sort of thing. It's probably more out of fear of lawyers than it is fear of damage because the radiation emitted by these seeds only uh, goes for about a half a centimeter. Uh, so that uh, is, means that it's not going to get outside your body. So the people that do have permanent seeds um, are, in theory, radioactive for a few weeks after their treatment, and uh, precautions are always exercised, though perhaps the concerns may not need, need to be as large as what people stipulate. But, it's, uh, uh, but for all the beam radiation types, uh, there is no radiation exposure to surrounding people at all. We've gotten this question also regarding Zofigo, which is an injection that people get, and it's a radiation form to the bones. So um, with that radium-223, is there any concern there at all? Well, sort of like the seed implant th uh, thing, because the radiation emitted from the radium is, is over sh such a short distance. It really can't get out of the body to hurt anybody. Uh, they do take precautions when people urinate and defecate because of, um, you know, flush the toilet twice and these sorts of things. The radiation distance being so small means that it's a very, very safe variant of radiation. So we have a patient who's experiencing erectile dysfunction from the radiation he received. And he, his doctor is saying that he shouldn't take testosterone, but he's wondering if there's anything that he can do to help mitigate the side effects. Well, testosterone hasn't been shown to be a great uh, way to restore erections, unless someone's already hypogonadal, uh, from maybe from their Lupron. And I don't know about this particular case, but there are people who've been on Lupron and finished their, their projected course of Lupron and unfortunately don't recover their testosterone afterwards and are consigned to having low testosterone for the rest of their lives, that doesn't seem right because when we stop Lupron, we expect testosterone to come back being produced by the testicles. So it is possible to take testosterone once a person has finished the, the uh, scheduled course of Lupron. And I just use Lupron as a generic name. So that um, idea of giving testosterone to someone with low testosterone is, might, be, might be helpful, actually. But it's not the first thought in people that have normal testosterone. Giving extra testosterone doesn't accomplish anything. And the management of erectile dysfunction is, is uh, you know, it's a fairly well understood area. You know, people start with things like Viagra and Cialis, and, uh, and then there's injection therapy, and there's uh, implanted prostheses. There's all kinds of things that can be done. Uh, obviously starting with the simpler medical type solutions like uh, Viagra and Cialis. Hey everybody, it's me and our dog, the PCRI mascot, Sir Hunter. You can go ahead and check out his Instagram and go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new prostate cancer videos every week.